Hi everybody, thanks for coming back to Queenie of London. Today I'm in Paddington and you will know that from this site, Paddington's greatest son, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Now this station opened in 1854 and was designed and engineered by this man here, one of the greats of the Industrial Revolution who revolutionized, revolutionized public transport in our country. Now prior to 1854 when this station opened as a terminus for the Great Western Railway, there was a temporary building which in 1838 the network quickly realised needed to be expanded due to a surge in trains coming in and increased passenger numbers. So Great Western Railways agreed that Brunel should design this new station. Now the wrought iron and glass in the three span roof was inspired by the Crystal Palace at the Great Exhibition that Brunel saw in 1851. On its opening, this construction was the largest train shed roof in the world. And there was an architect named Matthew Digby Wyatt who was in charge of all the decoration. Brunel's statue actually is between platform eight and nine and he overlooks the what would have been the director's office over there on platform one. It's also interesting that they've placed him there because in 1913 to 1916 uh, there was a great expansion product, project to increase the numbers of platform and it was from 9 to 16 that we have now that were added so it's as if Brunel is looking out at the station he created and has his back to the future what came after him but as you can see the architect for that project W Armstrong was inspired by Brunel and kept a consistency in the design to honour his work. This is a security announcement. And it wasn't until the 1990s that Brunel's original roof was replaced. Unattended luggage can cause unnecessary security alerts. The left luggage office is located on platform 12 with opening hours also seen that Paddington, the actual bear, the other of Paddington's greatest sons, created by Michael Bond, the statue has been moved to rather a strange position, I think, and it's not as prominent as where he was under the great clock arches before. He's over there. They couldn't have really chosen a more far away place. So I'm just going to have a little mooch around Paddington Station before I start this video properly with my subject matter for today. They have kept the actual plaque to Paddington Bear down there on platform one.
Welcome to Paddington and the New Elizabeth Line. Now currently, this new station entrance here will be where you will have to come in if you're using the Elizabeth Line um, from Reading. So you'd embark here and change and go down there to the Elizabeth Line again if you wanted to continue your journey that way. This won't stay this way um, for very long. In the autumn, it's hoped that all three bits of the Elizabeth Line will be connected. You'd come in at the higher numbered platforms here and the same at Liverpool Street. The higher numbered platforms is where you would come in if you were coming in from Shenfield. Now, given this station's amazingly rich um, heritage, the brilliance of Brunel's designs, it's fitting that the architects of this new station wanted to pay homage to that tradition. But we'll see some more of that when we're down in the actual ticket hall. But this here is part of the project that the architects have created and they were given a brief to sort of create a new civic space to connect the station to the city and extend the presence of the station within the city as a whole and this was an aim for each of the new 10 Elizabeth Lyon stations. There you can see wrought iron railings and I'm not sure if they are the originals are, or they're designed to look incredibly like the originals that are about Paddington Station as we knew it before the Elizabeth Line. Now Queenie of London is all about exploring the city with a Londoner. So you're gonna join me today as this Londoner takes her first ride on the Elizabeth Line. industrial there's two sets of escalators let's just have a little look about here before I board we have these totems and a lift in the middle here. Now the Elizabeth line is all about accessibility and step free access. Those ticket machines are looking very fancy. I'm going to get my Oyster card out and take a ride. This lighting's very interesting. It gives it a really, really sort of cocktail bar feel down here. Up there was very, very bright, and this is very ambient. I just want to come over here to look at these lights. pretty amazing because the ceiling's quite low here. Little mini spaceships I like that. So there's escalators there and there's lifts at the end there and no one's really using these ones. 
so I will go here. Oh, sorry. I want that train, but I'm not going to run for it. Please move down the platform and use all available doors. This is the end of the platform. I'm going to walk up here. It opened on the 24th of May, but it still smells incredibly new. I love this glass here, which is reflecting the lights. This feels quite homey. When I've looked at videos, it looks rather space age, but this looks very, very homey. Paddington. There we have the new purple round orb, which I'm just going to take a I'm really enjoying that the round doors are appropriately purple. For the Platinum Jubilee, but also because the Metropolitan Line is magenta, right? So it's kind of like a homage to the old steamers which connected Paddington to the other mainline train stations in the 1860s. See if you look up there you can see all natural light which is lovely and this is because it's a box station so it's not tunnelled. So, I'm going to wait for a train. I think they're consistent A and B all the way along the line. So, A for Abbey Wood and B for the Bear, I guess, <laughs> or Berkshire. I'm going to take another photo and wait for my train, which I think are every five minutes. Fire services to Bond Street. I repeat, this train will not stop at Bond Street. I love these mockets by Wallace Seal, I believe. Um, this train will not stop at Bond Street because Bond Street won't open until the autumn. So far I'm feeling very continental. The grey makes me think a bit of the New York subway rather than the London underground, but the seats, the design ties them in. These four seats here, always keep in your mind that this is a long route, it's a hundred kilometre route from end to end, so you're on a journey, like they, these are more of the comfortable seating, these four. I think their air conditioning is quite lovely, it's hot outside today and this feels very, very fresh and cool and we're off. I'm going to come back via Paddington to get some more shots then. This is the train to Abbey Wood via Canary Wharf. Mm -hmm. Next station, Tottenham Court Road. Change from Central and Northern. If you see something that doesn't look right, <laughs> speak to staff or text British Transport. I'm going to show you the map up here. Street. 
here today. You have to explore this one for yourselves. God, look at that. Okay, so come off here. So you go that way to Farringdon Station and that way to Barbican, which doesn't say it's a train station. such incredibly long platforms there is a real lack of seating. It's incredibly quiet but I don't mean just in terms of passenger numbers obviously it's just the middle of the working day it's Tuesday but it's soundproofed. Platform edge doors. This lights very bright. Wow. So the light there is really quite bright and clinical and then you have the warm light above the platform edge doors and then here you've got this curvature letting you know you're in a tunnel and these what have been called um, totems they go along and they use I think there's speakers and security cameras in those and also obviously this up lighting which I really quite like I feel kind of retro down here, even though this is all very modern. I do like that they're actual proper posters, though. It, this feels kind of safe bunker-esque. Also feels quite like... Contractor call for the ABAT. There's a contractor call for the ABAT. Could you make your way to the platform part one? Okay, the platform number one near the ramp for a code three. That's platform number one near the ramp, failure code three. Thank you. Yeah, so it feels a bit like a crypt. Whoa. My gosh. There's the screens. Which I don't like really. I like posters that get covered up over and over again and create this sort of like pallium zest of the commercial through time. Oh wow. So this artwork is supposed to look like tumbling diamonds because we're very, very near Hatton Garden at Farringdon and there's diamonds on the ceiling. This crisscross pattern. Wow. Now the architects of Farringdon wanted to celebrate the industrial heritage of metalworking, jewellery making, watchmaking, goldsmith, clocksmith, the area's historic trades. So at this end, the western exit and entrance you celebrate 
that with the diamonds here, which are also apparently to represent the linking of Thames Link and the Elizabeth Line. Which of course you can get Thames Link from Farringdon Station. Love that you can see through there to those lifts as well. Going to those more escalator stairs. We'll go up. a vast empty space. I'm going to touch out just for a little while. See you on the other side. So Farringdon is one of the line's oldest stations from 1863 and over there we have the station from the 1920s and it says Farringdon and High Holborn Station Metropolitan Railway and then just across this small piazza, we have the brand new. So that's quite cool. I like the juxtaposition of the two with the glass there, but um, I know there's a need for this space, but I will always love that. Let's go back in. decided to walk the 244 metres of this platform to go to the Barbican exit. I'll see you when I get there in six... These are swanky in that the line moves along so you can see moving map but it's kind of weird not having anything overhanging and also that assumes you can see that from way back against the wall just an observation there for people like me that are blind to that it is clear though Now I'm going to go in the lift because I think this is one of the inclined lifts which goes at the same speed to the escalators. I hope this is one of them. <laughs> funicular lift or a, uh, like a cliff train lift. Either way I kind of feel like a cross between a ski resort 
Or yeah, like at the seaside. It's a nice pace. It's supposed to be the same speed so the passengers can share the same experience. That was quite fun. <laughs> I'm more of a nerd than I thought. I like these lights. Oh, there's another one. Let's do it again. You do get some good pictures on the escalators. You can kind of see the workings over there. Let's go again. Get clear of the closing doors, please. Smithfield Ticket Hall. Good name. Yeah, so here in the ceiling we've got these concrete blocks which sort of echo the design of the Barbican, which is very cool. No one's going out. The signs aren't going to go. This one's It does it like a cable car like that. These escalators go slow until you step on them and they speed up and it gets me. <laughs> I'm too slow. That to be a well rehearsed commuter to do that professionally. cable car holiday vibes you sort of feel like you're in a tourist attraction because these are just so vast and so sort of they have a they're modern but they feel kind of spiritual in a way I definitely think that lighting has something to do with it when you're looking down from the escalators So I've only seen two stations, but I've already seen that each ticket hall and areas that you're travelling up to the ticket hall immediately beforehand, yeah. they're individual and they, they're like, they do draw on their local surroundings, which is really nice. I appreciate references like that. So B, A for the Abbey. 
going to wait for my train and we'll get on board and you can look forward to what you're going to see next. Wow, this is empty. I think also that spiritual feeling comes from the fact that it's so quiet. Again, because it's soundproofed. There's no echo and there's no wind because apparently something, the tra do the tracks sort of suck up the sound when you normally get the tube rushing through the platform and your hair goes everywhere. That's stopped, but you also have the platform edge doors, which I do think are great. This gives me cinema vibes, these lights. I think each train as they stand have the capacity for 1,500 people. Two minutes. TFL services and stations, if this helps you to travel with confidence. I would say I'm about halfway. <laughs> and I've still got two minutes. It's a good amount of people on these. Same vibe. I'm taking the Liverpool Street entrance as opposed to the Moorgate uh, exit, rather. <laughs> wow. Four meters underground. I'm expecting another load of escalators.
curve and we're seeing the waves. You can get out there for Broadgate. Keep going for Liverpool Street. So I'm back down in the tunnels and I've decided to walk to the Moorgate end because that turns into Liverpool Street underground ticket hall very, very rapidly. And we've all seen that before. And it's a lot quieter now, we're in between trains. So I can walk in the Totem Forest. Those escalators that we went up before are intended to feel like a cathedral. This station is so vast, it <laughs> literally stretches from Liverpool Street to Moorgate, which I just checked when I went outside at Liverpool Street, it's a seven minute walk if you went outside of the station, so that gives you an idea of how much you're travelling through these totem forests. There's posters for Swansea Uni everywhere. They spent a bomb here. So I'm going up and out towards Moorgate now. And I've seen that where there's three in the bank of escalators, the third one seems to be shut at the three stations I've been to, I beat the escalator that time. Also, all the advertising on these boards is the same. Feels pretty cathedral-esque now. That bright light, it's lovely. There's a lot of Portland stone around here and as we all know London was practically built itself with Portland stone. We can head outside and we'll have a little chat about how this station came. So of all the stations on the Elizabeth line, Liverpool Street, Moorgate was the most complex because they had to work around so much existing infrastructure. They had interweaving underground lines, a post office rail, and you had sewer systems, river, so it was very, very complicated to weave the Elizabeth line into. But they did it, and in the process they excavated so many artefacts from Roman, Roman times, and also a lot of bones from the burial site, the municipal grave, that was attached to Bedlam. It's a little historical info from me. So I'm going to head back into Moorgate now and I'm going to travel down on the A Abbey Wood bit of the purple train 
to our next stop. I will see you down on the platform. So I tell you what I felt a lot of in that little journey. It's it's so fast. It feels fast when you're on it as well. It's amazing. You could feel like undulations going up and down like waves, the carriages. And when you curve and also the train sort of tips on its side like a one of the virgin trains we've got canary yellow here going on the sides of the escalators this doesn't happen anywhere else I think this is the longest platform as well look at the ceiling this really this Elizabeth line sort of the grey and the white sort of glassy look. It suits Canary Wharf. This feels space shuttle-y to me. I don't know if I'm going the right way actually. We'll walk about. We'll just come back again. down to the platform. These lights are like runway. makes you feel like you should hurry along here because they do feel like runway lights like you're speeding to take off so we're going to come out of the station here and we're going to get some fresh air
So here you can see Cross Rail Place. This is an artificial island that was constructed to house the Elizabeth Line. It is 25 metres below the water, the Elizabeth Line. Now Cross Rail Place has been open for some time and it's just a five storey multi-use building. I'm going to take you up to the very top in a bit. But it's built in what was the import dock or North Dock in the West India docks of this area of the dock lands. Now this was designed to look like appropriately a docked boat. I'm getting more cruise liner vibes to be honest, it's impressive. And it really does. The triangulation there. I like that you can see the engineering. That purple roundel really works here. With all the grey. So one end of that platform takes you out to Canada Place and this end that I should have really taken uh, leads you to Cross Rail Place, which is where I'm going now. From the developing to the developed. See how slow, see how slow. Well, these ones actually go slow. <laughs> the yellow is gone because this is cross rails, no longer Elizabeth lines. Funky. But the yellow is there. We're going to go right to the top. So it's here on this level that you can take this tunnel, which is the Adams Place Bridge or the Star Wars Bridge. <laughs> um, you can take that to transfer to the DLR or the Jubilee lines. And it's ever so cool. I bet that looks really cool at night. So I'm here at the top of Crossrail Place and aside from there being a big easy, we're going to walk into a roof garden.
Now this lovely roof garden, unexpected roof garden, <laughs> is built exactly on the meridian line. This way? <laughs> exactly on the uh, meridian line. And so planting is arranged so that the species from either hemisphere sit on the correct side of the line. I believe there's an amphitheatre in here as well. You've probably noticed by now <laughs> that when the camera stops recording and the scene jumps, I'm taking a picture because <laughs> I'm exploring today as well with you guys. You can hear the airport, the um, aeroplane is really loud. The London City Airport. Absolutely love that crisscross on top of this boat. <laughs> what is most urgent? It's quite nice to see a load of green after being on the Elizabeth line for such a long time. All that white and light <laughs> and stainless steel with splashes of purple. But it's lovely to be with the greenery. Gosh, it just stretches. Pagola on the wharf. Yeah, look, theatre. 80 seater performance space. What a great idea. Short story station. And then you can go down. Quite spectacular. I love that these are kind of clouded and then you get ones that are clear so you can see the skyscrapers but it does feel like a retreat with the clouded. Pretty impressive. So I'm back in the Elizabeth Ryan station going down to the platform. I should add that at the moment the Elizabeth line is a Monday to Saturday service only. There is no service on Sundays. This will change, I think, when everything's ironed out and checked, I guess. Both of them. I thought both were in, but they're not. I'm at Custom House. 
Arts Excel Centre. There's a lovely roundel here, but I've got off here so you can actually see the train because they're behind the, the um, platform edge doors of the other stations I've been to and they're exposed here because I'm in the open air. So we'll wait for a train to arrive and you can see. B is the service to Paddington not stopping at Bond Street. something so cool at the moment about uh, the train terminating here at Paddington it's sort of bearing in mind the architects wanting to draw Brunel into the station to feel like this was a part of the DNA of the original Paddington it feels just really fitting that it's a terminus like Brunel always intended Paddington to be for the Great Western Railways Love that. So returning here after a journey, you covered quite a lot of miles, but it doesn't feel like it because it goes so fast. It feels very warm and very comforting. Like the, the warm light and the bronze tones. feels like you are appropriately like ending your journey. I also love that you can have natural daylight coming in. It feels like you're going home. Wobbly. Oh. So that canopy which lets in all the light, I think you can actually see there's clouds etched into it, which is really cool. That's the main feature in the station, and it does a lot. Very clever. And we're back. So we're just about hitting rush hour now and plenty of people are coming out of the Elizabeth line and going into it to continue their journey home, which is lovely to see. Thank you so much for watching today's video guys please like and subscribe if you fancy leave me a comment and tell me what you think of the new elizabeth line if you've ridden it did you have a good time did you enjoy <laughs> do let me know i'd be interested to hear your thoughts one final thing actually just before i leave you i found it quite significant really that there's such a space and a vastness to this line when you're uh, traveling to the platforms and you feel that scale is kind of symbolic in a way of our monarch's reign of uh, that brilliant 70 year span and everything that's happened within that time and in the end it's kind of even more special that it opened <laughs> finally in her platinum purple year don't you think i do 
so thank you so much again guys it's getting busy and I'm gonna get myself home now for a nice bit of tea and a cuppa um, but until next time long live the Elizabeth line the reign of the purple train take care guys bye bye